I am Dr. Ashima Sharma. I am the Professor and Head of Emergency Medicine at Nizam Institute of Medical Sciences, Hyderabad. Well, presentations of snake bites when in, in Bollywood style would be some sort of oral um, uh, toothpaste sort of uh, stuff coming out from oral cavity. No, it is not that. Traditional healing, putting up of ligatures. No, again, it is a big no. You cannot put ligatures or tunicates in the present day for the treatment of victims of snake bite. So let us go, go one by one. Let me tell you, there can be a possibility that at clinic levels or at the levels of PHCs or small centers, you can have patients coming with dry bites. Dry bites are very difficult to understand. What is the difficulty? The difficulty is, the bite was by a venomous snake. They, they show you the pic, the attendants bring the a picture of the snake. You can identify it being one of the fat code, but the patient is not showing any major symptoms of uh, venomous, uh, venomous snakes, be it redness, swelling, progressive around the fang marks, be it systemic envenomation if it is, has come late into your setup. Do not worry, this can be the dry bite. Dry bites are also very common. Rather, it says that 60% of bites are dry bites in our country. And they also only need observation. They again only need reassurance. But observation is essential. Going towards the elephant and volumation. I mean neuroparalytic presentation of snake bite. By, by itself, it means that there is, would be progressive weakness, progressive paralysis, and who are the, which are the snakes which are involved in it? Crit and cobra. Well, cobra can cause almost at, at within 30 minutes, let us within half an hour of bite to, to six hours, the weakness can reach to up from the minimum to the maximum. Whereas crit bites, most of the time, the weakness starts six hours after the bite and can progressively increase over the next 24 hours. There have been chances when it presents to you as weakness after 36 hours of the bite. This means what? This means that we have to be very worried and keep these patients under observation. We should refer these patients to a secondary health center or a tertiary health center where they can get assisted ventilation, they can be treated and obviously the ASV and get some laboratory investigations done and not just send them back home thinking that the bite was a dry bite. The systemic features of neuropalalytic snake bite, uh, they consist of two P's and five D's, so easy to remember and to even follow your, check your patient. So first P, which is seen in a neuroparalytic snake bite, is ptosis. Ptosis is nothing but grouping of eyelid. It can be uh, of one eye. It would be followed by diplopia, followed by the satria, when the patient would, victim would not be able to speak properly. It would be followed by dysphonia, where the pitch of the voice becomes low or less. The voice becomes more husky and followed by dyspnea, where there will be a breathlessness and dysphagia when he will be unable to swallow his own uh, sputum. Well, I would say at that point of time, that is one thing which we often see in our films, patients throwing out sputum, a lot of um, sputum uh, just after snake bite. It doesn't occur soon after it. The last P after these five Ds is paralysis. The paralysis can be a you can start from the intercostal muscles where the breathing will become difficult. It may also cause truncal ataxia. The patient will not be able to um, able to walk. Then it is also important for us to understand if you are in a clinic setup or you are in a small hospital setup, then uh, and you can elicit tendon reflexes. So the deep tendon reflexes would be absent. Obviously, all of these patients will have associated hypertension and tachycardia. Two of these patients, because I told you, uh, with COBRA it is so easy, within 30 minutes it will start happening. 
a few of them will be not showing these symptoms with little sick card. Well, is there any bedside test to know whether these are the patients who will have a neuroparalytic syndrome? Well, yes. Mm, bedside pulmonary function and, uh, testing. And this is very simple. It is called a single breath count. So what is single breath count? So you can ask the victim to count the digits in his normal vernacular language once he is exhaling. And this is a tidal volume breath. So he has to take one breath in, inspire. While exhalation, he has to say one, two, three, four, five, six, or eight, two, three, four, five, six, or whatever vernacular language he is speaking. So if he is able to count more than 30, more than or equal to C030, that means that his respiratory reserve is yet good. He, he has time to reach to a tertiary care center. He may not need assisted ventilation immediately. And even if we have identified it is as a cobra or great bite, it might be a dry bite. Is there any other test? Yes, there is a test called as breath holding time. Breath holding time is nothing but how much long the breath can be held in inspiration. So what does that mean? The patient will take a normal inspiration. It is not a very deep inspiration. It will be a normal tidal volume inspiration. Uh, it is very difficult to tell that patient victim at that point of time they are panicked. But you can just tell him to hold his breath once he has taken the breath inside. And the normal um, physiological reserve for breathing is about 45 seconds of breath holding. So if the patient can hold it at that about 45 seconds, he's still safe to be transferred. He's good enough. He has not yet got systemic envenomation. And a very simple way of doing it would be if he's able to speak as we are speaking. That is, he is able to complete the sentence in one breath. Now, this is very difficult when you have children as, as victims. They will not follow you. They may not do the single breath counts, the breath holding time, etc. So there, they would be crying. Okay. So if the cry is husky, you have to ask the parent, is the child's voice is like this? But if the cry is husky, what has happened? Dysphonia has happened. So the patient has gone through a little later stage of uh, paralysis. The one thing very important here I would like to tell you. Whenever there is a cobra bite or a crate bite, because of this neuroparalytic action, there is a possibility that you get these patients with bilateral dilated pupil or one of the pupil is non-reacting and sometimes both the pupils are non-reacting. Well, these, these here you should not declare them brain dread. It happens. It happens that patients come to your clinic after getting up at the PHC level, they have been seen. Why I am saying so? Because allopid envenomation um, uh, um, can itself cause this, number one. Number two, these patients must have received the first dose of neostigmine atropine or atropine neostigmine combination, which is supposed to um, work against this neuroparalysis. These uh, drugs also cause dilatation and non reactivity of pupils. So, please do not prognosticate your patients based on the presence of this particular sign. If they have not got an uh, erythropine or stigma and they have come to you and you do not have the facility of doing, uh, give, putting them on ventilator if the need arises, you have to refer them. Before referring, you can help them. And how can you do that? You can give them uh, atropine uh, with, uh, with neostigmine. The doses of neostigmine in adult patient, I'm telling you, would be 1.5 milligram plus atropine of 0.6 milligram. These doses have to be repeated every 30 minutes for five doses. Normally, it is seen that the doses responds to after the third dose. And if it doesn't respond, better to stop it. Now, here, the catch is that would I do all the 30, 30, 30, that is one point, uh, one and a half hours, 1.5 hours before shifting this patient? No. Just give them the first dose and ship them. Now here, if the patient goes in an ambulance which is manned by a trained paramedic or a doctor, junior doctor is accompanying the victim, it is also advisable that 
the 30 30 minutes intervals an can be given but one thing which we, which is very very difficult to treat in is the viper bite and why it is because it is vascular toxic and you have patients coming with local bleeding and with systemic bleeding it leads a lot of logistic support which is not possible at a periphery level why we need blood blood and blood products you may need um, a lot of laboratory investigations there can be um, a re- requirement of uh, massive transfusions at time and hence it is very important to choose the right center to uh, transfer these vascular toxic patients now as i told before also v is for viper and v is for vascular toxic let us talk about what exactly are the local manifestations so local manifestation is bleeding bleeding from the site of bite there there can be a local swelling there can be blisters it can start necrosing and um, it seems that it necroses as early as 30 minutes if uh, necrosis has to occur and then they uh, this there is uh, always a possibility of uh, compartment syndrome so bleeding inside the muscles in, in a particular compartment indian snakes not very often i would say but yes it is a possibility with vascular toxic and one has to in see for peripheral or i would say distal pulls when you get a vascular toxic manifestation pain on passive movement uh, a presence or absence of peripheral pulls uh, which is also called as pulselessness um, and uh, are simple simple uh, points to uh, tell you that this patient is having a possibility of going into a compartment syndrome if i am in a a uh, small hospital setting how would i further look into it should i look into it or should i straight away send him if you have the facility of a striker device now this device i cannot tell you like this but it measures the compartment pressures any compartment pressure should never be more than 30 mm of mercury or 40 cm of saline if you do not have then those who have the expertise and those who treat a lot of snake bites they can use a 16 gauge uh, iv cannula put it into that uh, particular place make sure you don't go through the bite fang bite area uh, go into that compartment don't go intravascular um, and connect it to a uh, uh, iv set which is flushed with normal saline and probably a 40 cm rise um, can tell you that this is patient is prone for developing compartment syndrome and now the sickness system is manifestation so head to toe to make it easy for you to remember so you one can see um, subconjunctival uh, hemorrhages you can have oral bleed especially the epistaxis and gingival bleeding uh, there can be acamotic patches all over the body um, if we go a little down then lungs can show hemoptysis um gi system can show hematemesis you know if the patient has some history of hemorrhoids he may be bleeding from his hemorrhoids if the patient had some other wound which was not re- uh, related to this snake bite he may bleed from that wound also so we have seen a lot of patients coming with fresh bleed per rectum which is not they were not the patients of um, hemorrhoids but it is seen these patients may also have acute pain in abdomen now it can be because of intra abdominal bleeds these patients can also have now this this will probably be not seen as other systemic manifestations i said but there there is a next level would be having intra cranial bleeds it will be assessed by presence of focal neurological deficits or what we call as lateralizing signs such as asymmetrical pupils asymmetrical pupils in the presence of vest viper bite uh, rule out intracranial bleed before you uh, think of you know doing next anything else well apart from it a very beautiful test is available and that beautiful test uh, which is available 20 minutes whole blood clotting test it just means that in a glass tube taking 2 ml of uh, blood of the patient leave it for 20 minutes 
If because of the consumptive coagulopathy, there will be no factors present because of the effect of snake bite and the blood will not clot. Will you like to do it again and again? Yes, I would do it every 30 minutes. I would do it every uh, 30 minutes for three hours and then forward after another one hour for six hours. Well, do it as per your local protocol suggests. But what is important is that if you have initiated ASV, then definitely do it one hour after the administration of ASV because this is this would be your test which will tell you whether the ASV is working or not. I would say that there are certain other bleeds which are very difficult to manage. These are hematuria, especially this pigment. The moment this uh, hemoglobin pigment starts appearing in urine, it is acute kidney injury and it requires nephrologist and that means it requires a tertiary care center. Well, apart from this, the females who had snake bites while they were growing up or some years back and they may come to you uh, if when after, this is something which is not acute snake bite, but they may be coming with pituitary failures, Sheehan's syndrome, amenorrhea. And this is very important in case of viper bites, and that is why I am trying to put it here in the vascular toxic next The last one is the pre-snake uh, presentation, and that I have said that it is more common in the coastal areas. When fishermen in their nets they get a snake, a sea snake. Well, it is it is not non-venomous; it is venomous. And how does it start? It starts with muscle aches, muscle swelling, and there is some involuntary contraction of muscles. Local community thinks that the patient is having a seizure activity. Do not get confused. It can be a snake bite. But how it progresses is that these myotoxic snake bites, they will have a lot of cardiac arrhythmias, so they will have palpitations. Uh, and these cardiac arrhythmias are more because of hyperkalemia. Um, they will have myoglobinuria, which is a dark colored urine, and they will also have this compartment syndrome and also have this uh, neuroparalytic signs. So, in short, if I am, if I have to give you the gist of how to recognize which is which bite, I would say recognize a neuroparalytic bite by doses, by head lag, by um, uh, head lag is nothing, but he's not able to hold the neck, or you can say broken neck syndrome. And apart from that. Um, dysphonia, poor cry. If I have to recognize a vasculotoxic, I will look for signs of bleeding, internal or external, and 20 minutes whole blood clotting test. If I have to see the myotoxic, I will definitely try to find out whether this patient has some was near a sea somewhere, whether he has um, been exposed to these coastal areas where this fight has happened. The probability of snake, uh, sea snake bite is more. And obviously, if you have um, uh, compartment syndrome, surgical help is needed. If you have uh, acute tubular necrosis and acute kidney injury, help from nephrologist is needed. If you have a neuroparalytic syndrome, help from uh, critical care physician, intensivist is needed. And if you have a vascular toxic syndrome, then you need the help of everyone involved in this and including the blood bank and health. Mm, sick bites, venomous bites, these ship them under supervision to a tertiary care 